Tell and Tell It Tales. I know y'all are here and you are excited for this live interview with King Wesley. So without further ado, let's go. I got it. Tam Tell and Tell. I got it. Tam Tell and Tell. I got it. Tam Tell and Tell. I got it. Tongue twister, say it real fast one time. Hey everybody, it's Tales of the Tales, and I know you guys are now you all, I know that you have seen this face, right? And you've seen it in so many places that you like, dang, what's that movie that I saw him in? Because it's so many, right? Now I'm gonna tell you what a couple of my favorites are. For sure, a good man. He was in that one. Um, the Dirty D. Um, and Birthday Behavior, he's in that one. But one movie that we are most definitely going to delve into pretty heavy because it is now streaming recently on Tubi, and that is Fatal Dispatch. So, before we start, we always do like a little uh, preference game, right? And so it's just, you know, fun, get to know you type of thing. So you ready? Okay, now y'all listen. Um, if you have not yet, if you have not shared this video, make sure that y'all do that because we want to make sure that everybody gets an opportunity to chime in because we are live. Okay? Um, ready? Right, sure. Okay. Now, remember before we started how, like, you know, I'll be catering the, the questions and certain things, and you said it was okay to ask you certain stuff. Yeah. Okay, so. <clears throat> I, I might, they might come up, you know, they might be a little risky. Okay, so we'll start off easy. West side or east side? West side. iPhone or Android? iPhone. A laptop or desktop computer? Laptop. Drop top or SUV? SUV. BMW or Mercedes? BMW. Beach house or cabin? Any Murphy or Richard Pryor? Richard Pryor. Dave Chappelle or Chris Rock? Dave Chappelle. Cat Williams or Kevin Hart? Mm -hmm. I gotta go. We'll go with Cat Williams. Cat Williams. Okay, then. I'm thinking I probably will. Okay, that's gonna be here now. This isn't about me. Um, Air Maxes or Jordans? Jordans. Hey, <laughs> LeBron James or Kobe Bryant? Oh, man. Mm, it's Gotta hard. go with the mom. Gotta go with the mom, boy? Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's fair. Dark liquor or light liquor? Tequila. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay. Um, Big Year Pop. Pop. A road trip or a flight? A road trip. A button down shirt or a polo? Uh, the new me is definitely one of the button down. Mm. Skinny dipping or a bathing suit? Skinny dipping. Mm. Ass or titties? Snacks. <laughs> Apparently, what's happening here? Okay. Um, 
Why are you fresh friends? Uh, fresh friends. Ford or Chrysler? Ford. Sweet tea or lemonade? Sweet tea. Regular law and order or law and order SVU? Uh, I see. Yep, I know who I mentioned. Um, I know the answer to that one already. Okay. Facebook or Instagram? Facebook. Okay. Facebook or TikTok? Facebook. Mm -hmm. I knew you were gonna say that. And then this is the last question, and I know it might get you into a little bit of trouble, but it's okay. We're fine. Tam Telling Tales or any other platform? Tam Telling Tales. Hey, yes. There we go. There we go. Y'all, we got us a little commercial break for y'all, so y'all stay tuned. Drop that face. I got it. Tam telling tales. I got it. Tam telling tales. I got it. Tam telling tales. I got it. Tongue twister. Say it real fast one time. Tam telling tales. Twister, say it real fast one time. Okay, everybody. So, commercial break is over. We was over here we was chit chatting about music and everything, and I'm glad because I got some some questions later on in the interview. They are music related, I think, a little bit. So I don't even know what they are. The producer got them ready. So we're going to see. We're going to test you. We're going to test you a little bit. But that's later on. In the meantime, we are going to continue talking more about you. Okay. And so I would love for you to tell us a little bit of background on King. King, uh, I was born in Dallas, New York, originally. Okay. I moved here when I was real young. Three or four years old. Oh, okay. Um, my mom, she was taking care of my grandmother at the time. So, um, she and me and my sister, my older sister, and older brother back here. Um, I grew up, I want to say, on the west side of Detroit. Um, I attended all west side schools except my final school that I graduated from, which was Clackley. Okay, I was going to ask you what high school you went to. Yeah, I did attend Cavs Tech. Okay. Yeah, I left Cavs. It was a little bullshit. Oh, okay. Yeah, I went to Northwestern. Got into a little bit of trouble over there. Um, Central. Got a little bit of more trouble over there. I mean, well, I, was, I, was, I was a teenager. I was a young man finding his way. Oh, okay. That's um, what we're going to call it. I like yeah, that. my way. Absolutely. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah, I, um, I went to Ferris State for a year. Okay. Got in a little trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so I love okay. <laughs> How long did it take you to find your way? I mean, listen, listen. I, I was what? I was eighteen, nineteen years old. Okay. You know, first out of the way to school, so um, I was just having fun. Mm -hmm. you know? And um, just like I said, got into a little bit of trouble. Wasn't nothing serious. Okay, well, not nothing serious. So, did you get kicked out of school, or you left? Just for a semester, own? I got kicked out for a semester. Oh, okay. just for a semester. But um, I'm all in. Because I was embarrassed. Like you know, I was the first kid to go away to college. And it was like I never, I never told my mom until um, just before I, two days before I went to the Navy. Wait a minute. So you have been out. You have been kicked out, and no, she I, didn't know. She let me. They let me complete the rest of the year. Okay. And then 
um, I got a certified letter in the mail, and they told me like I had to sit out a semester, and I was kind of, like I said, that was embarrassing. So I, but she didn't know. I, she didn't know. I told my, I told, her, I did tell my older sister. You know, that's my best friend. So I, I told her, um, and I went in and listened to the name. Mm. And because uh, I, I knew I, I needed to do something with myself, especially those first four years out of high school. Yeah, that's what I did know. Me finding my way, mm. you know what I mean. So um, I chose the Navy. And, uh, I did serve, you know, four years active, four years inactive in the Navy. Cute feather. Yeah. Hmm. I gave the man in the Navy. <laughs> this ain't got nothing with me. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> sorry. Um, and actually. <laughs> Uh, right around the time of the 9 11 attacks is when um, I actually got started with acting. Um, okay. You know, I was on, on board an uh, aircraft carrier inside of uh, USS Theodore Roosevelt. And right after the 9 11 attacks, we would, like two weeks later, we, would, we went right out to sea to go right over to Afghanistan to do all the bombing and stuff. We actually spent and you can Google this. We spent 159 days straight. I'm not even talking to people online because okay. the time frames is adding up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm so, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, we spent we spent almost uh, half a year out on out on water. Uh, but during that time, maybe like around the halfway mark of that 159 days, there was a first class petty officer. Can't recall his name, but he was into drama mm -hmm. and he started uh this drama club called the trekkies and one day we, we had sound funny right um but we were when we were on the mess decks so that's where we eat at and we were playing cards it was after hours after you know everybody's going to bed that's when we did our little gambling and stuff um but mm -hmm. we, we were playing cards and he told me then he said i'm about to start a um a drama club i said what a drama club i always had the acting in my in my you know in me you know i realized that i had a gift you know like seven eight years old mm -hmm. i was a granny's baby you know sitting around with grandma we had to i had well i, I didn't have to but you know you wanted to. i wanted to right she would watch her you know her, her stories and her, and, um, her sitcoms you know on thursdays and fridays saturdays i was a normal kid waking up early eating a bowl of cereal at the time and watching cartoons but it was something it was something that clicked that I, I noticed about myself. Um, those of us that grew up it back in that time, um, there was a lot of reruns. So you can catch a rerun like sometimes twice in a week, just depending on what network it was and what show was playing. And I knew um, I had something special because I could remember the, the lines. Sometimes it would be like complete verbatim. Sometimes it would, you know, I'm trying to put it in my own words, but the overall gist, I had it. You know what I mean? So I started like knowing I had something special then. But as a kid, um, I've only heard of actors and actresses coming from two places, either New York or California. Uh -huh. So uh, here it is. I'm, I knew I was from New York, but I'm like, okay, it don't look like we ever going back there. I mean, I'm here, you know, in Detroit, where it was, you know, there's factory workers and, you know, just my, my, my grandmother, she retired from Michigan Bell back in, you know, she did 30 years, more than 30 years there. You know, so we, I was just looking at like blue collar regular nine to five type jobs. So yeah. that was just something, acting was something that it started in my mind when I was younger, but I kind of put it on the backbone because I didn't have an outlet to really, you know, you know, pursue it. And I never talked to my mom about it because um, she was, she was off into things, you know what I mean? In the streets and whatnot. So I kind of like just say, you know, one day if ever, hey, uh, I'm, that's what I'm, that's what I'm gonna be at. You know, I don't care what I'm doing, it's gonna have to stop if that opportunity presented itself. Mm -hmm. And that opportunity presented itself in 2001. Um, and you was, and they were called the Trekkies. The Trekkies. Okay, so you was a Trekkie. Yeah, I was a Trekkie. We did a lot of improv work. Everything was improv. He was only giving us scenarios of what he wanted to see. And um, I was the first person that he cast. It was like 20 of us that auditioned. Like he was like, no, you're gonna be a part of this. Because he asked me that, did I ever take classes? I said, no, you know, I was just raw. No raw talent at the time. And um, 
Are you the turkey? I love it. Okay, and so you did your four years. You got out. You came back to Detroit. And you started doing, you know, some regular stuff. But then you decided that you was ready to get into acting, right? And so what did that look like for you? So um, when I first came home, um, I kind of like chilled out, like I said, the regular stuff. But then I actually started looking into, um, like, who had, like, where was the actors at? Mm-hmm. And the metro, you know, metro probably in the area, and it was only over in Royal Oak, like you know what I mean. And it was, it was, you know, it was whites and Caucasian Americans, you know what I mean, predominantly. Mm-hmm. So um, I did enroll in one of the uh, actors, the actors blogs classes or whatever. Um, I took, I, I ran in and did the beginners course, and the instructor, can't remember her name at the time. Um, she told me, she was like, uh, you need to be in, in, in this other course, you know what I mean? So they kind of moved me on, and I didn't really care for the teacher that was over there. Mm-hmm. So um, what I did was, I remember what uh, the petty officer in the Navy, they gave me, you know, like work on improv, you know what I mean? So I found out that improv was really, really, really uh, a, a great skill set to build especially in theater because mm-hmm. that's what started I started in theater so um i just kept that in mind and i worked and i worked and i worked and i worked that and um i didn't get cast for anything until 2009. Mm-hmm. and that was what diamond girls Yay. Was uh, and, okay uh, okay i was the original carlos um joseph <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Diamond Girls, like, put everybody on, everybody, Diamond yeah, Girls, that. between the stage play <clears throat> and the movie, everybody was in there. Yeah, that play, um, to me, was the start of where we at now, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Because it was, for those of you that, you know, in the audience that may view this later, or even if you may have seen it, it, it like, the first time we did it, he cast me in 2009, but the, um, executive producers, you know, they backed out. So he said if he ever got, you know, Joe said if he ever got the chance to do it again, he would want me to come back out, you know. So in 2012, I got an uh, uh, inbox on Facebook and he said, bro, I want you to come back out. Um, I do have you in mind for Carlos again. I just want you to come out and just read and out. So I came, I was one of the first people in line. He's like, let's go. you know, let's go. and. He's like, man, just stick around because I want you to read with other people, stuff like that. And um, that first Diamond Girls play, uh, shout out to Joe Smith, he broke so many barriers. Mm-hmm. You know, he brought the real, the urban street. You know, for those, like I say, for those that remember it, it was like, that's when we introduced the guns with the blanks, the, the large lump sums of money, the drugs, and, uh-huh. you, know, the, the, <laughs> you know, the jewelry and stuff like that. So, um, to me, that, that was the start of where we are at, you know mm-hmm. what I mean, with the culture. You know, it was others that came, or, you know, came after, of course, um, you know, dentistry and stuff mm-hmm. like that with his stage plays, which I worked with him as well. Um, but yeah. Come on, stage plays. Okay, so if you had to pick, doing stage plays <laughs> or doing movies? Um, I would, I would, I would say, movies right now the movies though my heart is on that stage mm-hmm. that stage has made me who i am in front of that camera mm-hmm. you know um it's it's taught you know the 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 amount of um rehearsal time that we spend on stage because it's, it's live you know whatever we you know whatever comes out however it comes out that's when you're on that stage me. that's what they get mm-hmm. and sometimes even if you you know you can you know, you can nail it, right? Um, you got to learn how to work the audience. A lot yep. of people don't know that part. Mm-hmm. Like you got to learn how to work the audience because you can sit up and rehearse. Let's say if it's a comedic piece, you know, they they may not think it's funny, but how did that, you know, you might have did it a thousand times in rehearsal with the crew and everybody just falls out laughing, but 
you know, comes to art, you know, when it's time to do it. Right. In front of that or you don't even know it's that funny. Yeah. And then that's the, you know, they, the artist the art, is, it, it has a rough. Now you got to be quiet while they laughing. You gotta let Otherwise, they ain't going to hear you. You got to let it marinate. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> you got to let it marinate. But you also have to keep in mind, depending on where you're performing at, let's say if you're down at the music hall, there is a time schedule. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So they are unionized workers down there. So you have to learn, like I say, learn how to work the crowd, let them erupt, but then project. Yes. If they if they are, you know, you gotta learn how to get them back. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So uh yeah. Yeah, so this is a conversation of a professional people, okay? So he comes from the stage world, and what I find is that a lot of people who come from the stage world are some of the actors that we that we hold in high regard when it comes to the film industry. Like a lot of times you can almost tell. Yeah, like, you can feel it. Yeah, you can kind of feel, feel it. it. You, you know what it. I mean? So, and, and I mean, that's no shade to anybody who doesn't or well, hasn't I, done, you know, stage. Absolutely. But it's, up, it's something about a stage play actor's energy. Mm-hmm. You know, it just always translates differently in front of the camera. So, and you're definitely one of those. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. So, um, <clears throat> I would love to um talk a little bit more about the films that you have been in, right? So I've had the pleasure of seeing you in quite a few of them. And what happens a lot of times is when you're watching the movies, you you don't even know who's going to be in it. You know, you just start watching and you're like, oh, hey, I, I recognize him. I recognize her from whatever, right? And so... I have seen you in quite a few films. And like I mentioned um, for the sake of time, um, I did want to talk in detail about a couple of them, right? So I'm feeling like the first one that I want to talk about is uh, a good man. (laughs) I definitely want to talk about a good man because listen, (laughs) <laughs> uh, one thing you was not <laughs> baby you was a good man mm. okay so and it's it's very interesting because I've had Kamal here and we we came to blows verbal blows not real blows mm. about how much I disliked him and how much I didn't think that he was a good man right and which that could have been you know People could disagree with me, but I don't think anyone is going to disagree that this guy here, absolutely, absolutely abominable. Okay, <laughs> terrible, <laughs> horrible. I would love to know what it was like auditioning for that role, and then just sitting there with chest out, just laughing, knowing you about to die. I, I need to know. So, um, actually, um, I didn't audition for it. Okay. Actually, I was handpicked for it. Um, but of course, even with being handpicked, you have to, you got to deliver. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, as you guys see, Ebony Chase and Kamal, they were the leads in that. Um, they were hand, they were handpicked. You know what I mean? Okay. So, they had, like, some time to do the chemistry reading aspect. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So when I got the call from Joe, it's like, hey, I got this role. Um, I just got I think that you will literally kill. Um, you know, I want to send you a script and everything. I was like, okay. And he's like, oh, by the way, your name's Chaos. And he said, just K. let that, he said, just let that marinate. With a K. You know, he said, before you even read the script, Chaos, right? So, uh, okay. You know, <laughs> um, when it was, t- <laughs> and, and, and you know, let, let's keep it all the way. Let's keep it all the way on top. He even gave me the disclaimers um, about the sex scenes and the intimate scenes or whatever. And he was like, "Hey, bro, um, I think your wife is gonna be okay with this." <laughs> Listen, I said, "You know what, um, uh, bro? Uh, you know, I wasn't I'm, sure I'm, if I was gonna ask. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see you put it on the floor, right?" <laughs> Okay, so we're just gonna put it on the floor. Okay. I said, Well, we can find out right now, we ain't gotta waste no time. And you, if we gotta move on, you gotta move on. Then we go, Hey, babe, Joe gotta ask you something. Okay, you put on speaker, put on speaker. What's, What's going on? Uh, Joe, in his politi- politically correct way, right? Uh-huh. He said, Hey, uh, hey, sis, uh, <laughs> he's so articulate, yeah, baby, right? 
that's the Virgo in him, right? Uh, he says, hey, uh, sis, we have, you know, I got this role for bro that I know that he was murdered. Um, this, the, 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 the cast that I have with him, I know that the, the chemistry will be there. And he has multiple sex scenes. Are you okay with that? She was like, well, can you, you know, how, how in depth are they? You know, he was like, uh, it, it, it's a little raunchy, you know, but we, you know, we can play it, you know, play it safe. So my wife's rebuttal was, you know, if it's not believable, then I'm not going to allow them to do it. Come on in. Say it So, <laughs> you know, I had to sit back as a CEO and put it on the floor. Baby. I said, you know, that's what, that's why I'm at. You know what I'm saying? Just, if we don't do this, we don't do this. Hey. But no, she, she's, uh, she's very much, you know, my biggest support system. You know what I mean? So, um, and she knows Abby. She knows, come on, she did no joke. You know what I mean? And she, you know, she loves the chemistry that we have on screen. You know what I mean? That wasn't even Ebony's first time. I, I think that was maybe our third or fourth, you know, uh, project that we worked it's together. Birthday behavior. We did yeah. birthday behavior. Yeah. And then I'm going to take you back in time. We got a web series that you go check out now. It's, it's, it's on uh, YouTube. It's entitled Carter and Cody. I have heard of Carter yeah. and Cody. Yeah. It's Shout out to Victoria Sharp. So, um, I said, you know, once she gave the green light, uh, I said, baby, you know what? To make it even sweeter, won't go, let's, let's just, you come to the table, read too. So as I'm hearing it for the first time, you're going to hear it for the first time. Okay. You know I mean? So, um, we, you know, she came, she sat to the side, everybody spoke to her, hey, hey, hey. And we read that table read was fire and dynamic. And when it was done, I looked over at it, she two thumbs up. So it was, the green light was given. You know, she, she spoke with Ebony. Nothing but mutual respect both ways. Girl, kill it, do what y'all gotta do. And you know, the rest was history. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. We appreciate all that you have done for the audience. They heard yeah. a Shana. That's your sister? No, no, no. Hey, that's no, that's my wife. Hey, Shana. Oh, What's up, baby? My Virgo, bro. Oh, she's on my job. Okay, yeah. Hey, yeah, hey. yeah. So, yeah, we thank you. Shana. Yeah, Shana, Shana, <laughs> she, she's she's the she's she's the one. Like that's what she's going. Well, we glad that she that she allowed you to do that. And I'm glad to hear that you had the respect for her fan to allow it. The table read was on the anniversary. What'd she say? The table read was on the anniversary. Yeah, it was actually on our anniversary. Okay, so what y'all what y'all need to say? You gotta get some practice here. Don't do it like this. You gotta do it like this first. Okay, she said, "Let's put this into action, baby." Where do we do it? I love it. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, she's 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 a rider, man. She she always put down. That's what's up. Shout out to the wives, yo. Shout out. Okay, so we talked about a good man a little bit. I told you how terrible you were mm -hmm. um, of a man, but definitely <laughs> not in those scenes. Um, and for those of you. <laughs> Those of you who are watching, make sure that y'all check it out. A Good Man is streaming now on Tubi. It's a Tubi original, okay? So it's there. Y'all go ahead. Y'all check that out. Again, he's not a good man, okay? Um, and although we're probably going to mention it again a little bit later on, but A Good Man too mm, is coming. March 30th. March 30th. So those of you who are watching, if you are local in the Detroit metropolitan area or if you're willing to travel, they got a movie premiere coming up, yeah. March the 30th. Go hit the links in um in the cast bio. Uh, hit it. Hit the link in Joe Smith bio. Get your tickets on Eventbrite, or just go to Eventbrite. Type in a good man too. Uh, you'll find it. Yep, you will thoroughly enjoy yourself. It's just something about a red carpet event in the you No, know, it's a it's a different type of energy. Right. I know y'all get to watch the movies on you know the screen at home and. Eat your popcorn and drink and all that kind of stuff. But when you are in the theater and you get to like be around other people experiencing the movie for the first time, it's just a whole another kind of energy. So I'm encouraging everybody that if you can, that y'all grab y'all up some tickets so y'all can check out a good man. Yeah, go, go support go support your people. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure y'all do that. Now. <clears throat> uh -oh. On to the next movie, and this is the movie that we're really here to talk about. 
this is the movie, everybody, that is streaming now on Tubi. Recently dropped in the last couple of weeks. I had the pleasure of um, seeing at the red carpet um, last month and was absolutely floored by this man's performance in the movie. And that is Fatal Dispatch. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. We in here clapping. Okay. He was good. Now, let me tell you something about us when we be in these uh, movie premieres, right? So, I got I got my people in the back. You know, my producers, we be, we be out here, right? Mm -hmm. So, we sitting all together. And so, now we watching this movie. And the movie's been playing for a while. We get to certain scenes. Certain things are happening with this guy right here, hmm. and now like our jaws on the floor, you know. Now we now we whispering to each other like he ain't acting no more. That's how he be real. Right? We refuse to believe that he was acting like he transformed everybody. He transformed in this movie, and I just was like, I don't know that I can look at him the same. Oh my goodness. Y'all, Thomas. Yeah. Thomas, Thomas was a character. Okay. And I'm not gonna spoil it because I know that the movie is still somewhat new for everybody. So we don't want to spoil it for you, but we do want to make sure y'all know it is so good that you need to watch it, right? Nice. And so twice, watch it twice. Yeah, and then three times or seven. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because we all know how the two thing go. The more y'all watch, the more they make. So, see what I'm saying? You know, and it's good, excellent quality filming. Uh, when Dewan was here, he talked about how important it was to have great actors and great production and direction. And he he checked off all the boxes with this film. Absolutely. Checked off all of the boxes. Um, so, Fatal Dispatch, for those of you who did not have a chance to watch it just yet, is a film about listen I'm, I'm talking about the movie like this one movie okay wait i'm doing so much talking i'm gonna let king tell you guys about this film and his role in it um before i ask this though oh, i gotta okay. ask you a question oh scared. timeless or chaos mm. huh. mm. Mm. Ooh. Mm. That's a good question. Ah, go on it. We mm. Mm. Wait, we going with we no. We gonna have to go with Thomas. We go with Thomas. We going with Thomas. Okay. Yeah, we gonna go with Thomas. So <laughs> that's a oh, that's a hard one. Though, that's a hard one. Thomas. Favorite dispatch. Um, first of all, let me start by saying a uh, huge shout out to uh, Road Design, um, Jazara Richards, Dewan Ford, Sierra Angeli, Emily Lawrence, Gary Bruner. Um, and that entire cat, I mean, that entire crew um, that made the thing happen. Um, Fatal Dispatch was a remake, actually, right. of uh, mm -hmm. the original film, Halt. You know, um, the creators, they wanted to come back and visit it. And because there's a lot of new things that they have learned and, um, and wanted to implement into the, into the project. So they wanted to bring in, you know, the new cast. So, um, shout out for, uh, to Jazar and uh, Ro for you and Dewan for even thinking of me to actually attempt to play with Thomas. Mm -hmm. um, but Fatal Dispatch is about um, uh, a man on a mission, um, for lack of their better words. Uh, he's on a mission, um, and he also he has a, a couple of uh, diverse things that he's he's trying to accomplish at one time. Um, one of which comes just secondary to what his primary goal was, you know? So without giving too much. Are we talking about you or we talking about your part? <laughs> 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 we're talking about my character. Okay, okay. Yep. Because- Oh, he's not it's, giving y'all. He not, he not giving y'all nah, this. I, I, I ain't gonna give it. I ain't gonna give it. I ain't gonna give it. Tell all of it. Um, but this, uh, this, my, this character that I portray, he's on a mission. Um, and uh, it all stems from um, what the audience is going to see. Um, or, you know, shout out to Gary for even perceiving it uh, from a racial standpoint. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to hear some things that are going to trigger you. Um, but it's definitely not, you know, racially driven. It's just to raise awareness. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? All things that do happen. 
um, and some mistakes that officers make. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because of you know our skin texture. Mm -hmm. You know. And interesting enough, the film is presented initially as if it's going to be one thing, mm -hmm. and then the next thing you know, it's <laughs> something something else happening, and you like. I wasn't even expecting yeah. this. It, oh. That's what I wasn't gonna say. You know what I'm saying? Oh, because okay. it once you once you look at the trailer, right? You mm -hmm. play the trailer, play the trailer before you watch the movie. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna it's going yeah, like she said, you know, cut out the bag now, it's gonna take you in one direction, you're, the movie's gonna take you in a whole other direction. So yes. um either way, um I guarantee you this, it's not one of those movies that you can just put your finger on right away and say this is going to be that and that's going to be this. Absolutely, you know, and you and you shouldn't even at this point. Most people don't want to see films like that anyway. Right. You know, they want to go in thinking that they know what it's going to mm -hmm. be and mm -hmm. then you know end up mm -hmm. I can, getting shot. I can we definitely did. I can remember sitting that night sitting in, in you know the audience and, and I'm hearing people, you know, even my wife, you know, like I'm hearing like different. Things. So when certain things turned in the opposite direction, mm -hmm. it was like, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. This was, this wasn't, mm -mm. and that's what, to me, to me, in my eyes, that movie was told from like a tale of two sides. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Shout out to Gary Bruner. He was genius on Absolutely. the first half of delivering and pushing that ticket. Shout out to Sierra Angelique because she came in and she she did her thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But then that bottom half. Huh. You know. Oh my. <laughs> it was um it was a sight to behold. And uh just again, kudos to you, you. for all that you actually made us feel mm -hmm. in that theater watching you because I hadn't seen you in a role like this before. Like mm -hmm. A good man was very close to it, but you were, you know, like a supporting actor in that way. And this one, it felt like you were, you know, one of the main. This was, you this, know what I mean? This, this was you. This was my you first know? lead. This was you. This is my first lead. And you did not disappoint in any aspect. Did you have to audition for that role, or they was like, "Hey, I got I was, I got, I, was, I got a call. I got yeah. a call. I got a call." Um, again, it's it, even though you get that call. It still has to be there. Mm -hmm. It's still it's still a sense of auditioning, really, until those cameras go up and they yell action. Mm -hmm. Because I've seen people get replaced same day, mm -hmm. day before. You know what I mean? And they got they might have got a call or whatever. Yes, I still go out and audition. I do some in auditions, um, but this has let me say probably the last three to four years has been phones ringing. Yeah, you know what I mean. So. Again, I'm I'm um I'm not gonna say I'm humble, but you know, because that dims people like I'm, I'm my attitude is full of gratitude. So I'm thankful for the opportunities that all the filmmakers when they do call it or when they do think of me, even if they, they say, Hey, I might have found something better and but you were in the in you know, in the run, it's like thank you because we in this business and it's very competitive and we do have a lot of a lot of talent here. So um I knew um, when they called me, they told me this, you know, hey, you leave, you know, and I'm like, this is what I've been waiting on, you know what I mean? Um, it was, you know, all throughout my career up until last year, uh, what was it, May, June, when I got the call, like everything was supporting, everything was building up, you know what I mean? And I knew the time was coming and I told my wife, uh, I said, you know, I'm going to, um, I'm going to give them something different. And I guarantee, I'm, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this now. Mm -hmm. Y'all got it first. Y'all ain't saying nothing yet. Oh, well, listen. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Okay, then. I'm here for it. I believe you. Because after that performance in favor of dispatch, okay. What you, you said, what you said, what he said. <laughs> mm -hmm. I believe you. Okay. Okay, so listen. <clears throat> Everyone, let me say this really quickly before we move on. Fatal Dispatch, again, is streaming right now on Tubi. So if you have not checked it out yet, make sure that you do. And if you have watched it, make sure y'all go and run it back. Yeah, go tell me, go tell a couple of people. Yes, you know it's, it's that good. Go so it's that good. Now, I get it. Sometimes 
you know, oh, it's an independent film. It's on Tubi. Mm-hmm. And you know, and you know what the people say. Yeah. However, what I'm telling you is that this is not one of them. This this is one of those films that if you're watching it anywhere else, yeah. you, you you would be like, oh, this fits. You don't right? forget that you had that stigma about it. You will. Going into it. You will absolutely forget that. Like, forget what you thought you knew, and you <laughs> head on over to Tubi and you check out this film that King was to put his foot in this role. Okay? Yeah. All right. Boom. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move on a little bit because. He he is on his press junket, okay? This man is he moving and he got places to be. So we got 15 minutes. Yes, we got 15 minutes. So bet. <laughs> okay, so I want to ask you this. Talk to you. Um I was I was on uh social media earlier and people was asking, like, oh, we should have the movie and have like all of these Detroit actors in it and all this kind of stuff, right? And it reminded me of something that DeWine had mentioned when he was here about a superhero. He said be a superhero, right? And I'm feeling like a superhero movie would be so awesome, right? And so I'm just curious. If you were going to be a superhero, what would your superpower be? (laughs) Well, um, I'm not going to base it on my stature. Okay. All right. Most people would. Mine would be mind control. Oh, that would be so terrible. Um, Oh, and great at the same time. Because I do have, I do have, um, like, I like villains. You know what I mean? I like the bad people. But I like to also teeter. um, I like to push people buttons. You know, the, my alter ego does. I like to push people buttons. And I've, 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 I've mastered that. You know what I mean? I, I know what people, I know what gets up under people's skin. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, my, uh, mind control. Mind control. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because if you can be the person mentally, you can beat them anywhere else. That's very true. That's very true. Okay, man. Yeah, I'm putting together like the mm-hmm. like the superhero. Uh, what, what would it be? Like the whole little team of superheroes? The super but, friends. Yeah, the super <laughs> friends. There we go. So, you gonna have my control. We gotta figure out what uh what the who else gonna be a superhero. The one will be a superhero. Who else gonna be a superhero? We gotta put we this gotta, together. We gotta put this together. We gotta. Uh, we do. We got my homie. We, we got my little brother right here. Uh, Barter as a superhero. No, see, Barter would have to be like he has strength. He'd be a yeah. villain. Okay. But see, the thing you is, think be a I think he. I think Which see, that's what everybody would want him to be. That's true. Flip it around, make, make him, him yeah. make him, make him, make him, yeah. So in my head, he would have been a superhero anyway because you know. So if but, I was, if I was going to be like like the the, the, the hero, right? Murder. I would want my powers to be. Um, I'd like to teleport. Mm-hmm. Okay. I just, I just, I'll be able to teleport. Get people out, get people where they need to be, get myself where I need to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, I don't know who uh who about to write this movie. Us. <laughs> okay. We didn't call it this because my, <laughs> my producer is an author. Okay. Down the world. Yeah, she's an author, okay? Okay. okay. She on my wall. There she go. Mm-hmm. She's right there. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's just one of them. But we, yeah, there it is. We about to have a um a Detroit superhero movie. I, I like love it. it. And we all buffed up. We be all buffed up. <laughs> 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 oh, okay, the one to have the beard. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? We gotta have somebody who knows us. Like yeah, it's like Clark Kent and uh um, once they put the buff on <laughs> that's that's what I'm talking about. I like great. Put the buffs on. Right. Oh, the buffs so on. you kept the president and had the little thing. Yeah, everybody put the buffs on. <laughs> like, they put the buffs on, you put it on, and then it just go into your face. Like, you got buff vision. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. Yeah. Go on, give me it up. Y'all give it up. You go ask the superhero to come out and get the Burberry fit. Yeah. Oh, my God. 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 Oh. Like, where <laughs> yeah, that's the moment. All right, listen, don't look, listen, don't y'all take this, okay? I feel like we about to have to take this out because if somebody's gonna try to take it, <laughs> Buck Vision about to be in. Right. You understand me? 
Jay, I was gonna tell him the story because I know he don't remember it. I remember it, but I'ma just I'ma just wait, Jay, until I see you again. And I'm gonna tell you the story that I have about you. It's not it's nothing bad. It's nothing bad, okay? You're good, you're good. Okay? And let me throw this out. Shout out to Jay. He just cast several of my students in his project that he's working on. Hey, okay. Okay. that's what's up. Okay, that's what's up. It's a it's an acting story, I promise, okay? Um, oh, I can't I'm excited about this bus vision. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm super excited. Okay. Boom. All right. So we're doing good on time. I'm going to play a game with you real quick before we go, right? Because I love a good game. Mm -hmm. I really do. And so the fun part of this is I don't even know what the questions are, right? So sure. <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> they pick them up and I just ask them. You know, we're going to see. We're going to see what's going on here. Okay, so are you ready for a fun game of real quickly, lyrically correct? Okay. Okay, great. Okay. Oh, boy. <clears throat> Hope you don't like that 90s. What? It's new music. I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Like, huh? Just... <laughs> Long rap, uh huh? They ain't using no more aisles. Huh? Huh? Oh, no, we got you on this one. Okay. How many earrings did LL Cool J want his girl to have? Damn. <laughs> yeah, but kind of like mine. Four? <laughs> nah, dog. Nope. Two. Yeah. Two yeah. Two. Two. Uh -huh. yeah. At least I'm a, two pairs. Yeah. At least two pairs. Two pairs. Two pairs. At least two pairs. Yeah. Two pairs. Paris four. You know what? Like that's what that buff is. Like my idol. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Queens. How is Queens to be He was right. But math is math. Okay. Uh next lyrically correct question. Why Clef said he'll be gone until when? November. Oh, well, there it is. Uh -huh. <laughs> there it is. Okay, so we done with Lyric Correct. Okay, so we, we be having all kind of cards and everything. Now we're on to Black Card Revoked. <clears throat> okay. The, the fun thing about Black Card Revoked is you may or may not actually even give us a long answer. Okay, okay so this one is finished the phrase. Mama said, Stop running in and out of my house before you what? These are your options. A, hurt yourself. B, let a fly in. <laughs> C, break my screen door. Or D, let my good air out. Let my good air out. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Pick one. You come in or you going out. <laughs> one or the other. She had that fly. So my grandma had that fly swatter, so that wasn't it. Yeah, uh -huh. uh -huh. Some little fly swatter. And then she ain't had no AC either, so that how it was. <laughs> <laughs> we had radiators. We had a turn the key. On, Man. On the furniture. She did. Yes, on this one couch. I'm like, grandma. It's hot and I'm sticking Man, to I'm it. Not, I'm not doing oh. that. I, I ain't know. I'm did not, you I'm, have like the little plastic runner in the uh, <laughs> in the house too? Oh! Don't let it slip over you. Man. Hey, right. right. look, you run on that with your socks. <laughs> oh, then when it's time for them to uh, lift it up, like, you see how dirty it is. You see how dirty it is? I'm like, we got to get that back like that. Bro, that listen, that taught, that taught me, shout out to my wife. We was just talking about this the other day, about the, the bucket and broom, the, the wet sweeping. Yeah. We used to get that, man, that carpet used to be right back, like, up under that. Boom. Okay, get it together. All anyway, right. Yeah. Next question. Who is your all-time favorite movie thug? Okay, so I'm gonna give you some options, okay, to pick from. You got A, Nino Brown from New Jack City, B, Doughboy from Boys in the Hood, C, Bishop from Juice, or D, Tony Montana. 
on Scarface? Um, like that accent. Thug life. Y'all know the rules. Got to do what you got to do. <laughs> Stay true. Bishop. Bishop. All right. There you go. <laughs> no wrong answer with this. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. Like that. That's why I picked that one. I felt like that. <laughs> They're terrible. Okay. And this is our last question. What's most likely to be found in a purple crown royal bag? And here are your options. A. Cigarette. B, weed, C, candy, or D, loose change? All of the above. Oh, you know what? That's what I was thinking. Because my, my mama had her <laughs> weed, her cigarettes, and her chain. <laughs> bring, me, bring me my pouch. That purple, pouch. the purple one, right? Oh. Bring me the pouch. Yeah, it was definitely all of the above. Shout out to Crown World for them bags. Them bags. You, I'm, about to, I'm about to give y'all some, man, DeWine gonna kill me for this, but it is what it is. What? We was on the set of the Dirty D season. No, that was Carmen. We was on the set of. Uh -huh. uh, it was the same with him and Kiva. They was getting, they was doing what they do. Man, I didn't realize what he did with the Cry Royal bag. Because he's a Cry Royal, he's a Cry uh -huh. Shipper. Listen, I know. I'm laying on the couch, it was, it was sleep. All I heard them was joking was like, Man, you put your in the ground world bag. <laughs> oh, and they in the. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, who do my, that's my that's my that's my brother. He 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 tell us. He tell us Listen, it. I was laying on couch because we was in between scenes, and, and I I just hear the 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 the, the production like, man, you put your in the crowd world bag. I'm like, <laughs> man, listen, man. The wild holds it down for them light skinned brothers. <laughs> Let me tell you. Hold it down. He, he holds it down. Shout out to the brother, man. Come on, the wild. Okay. Listen, before we, I know we're on the time. I got, okay. I got a bomb to drop on y'all. I was going to say, that's what, my next question. Yeah. I was like, you're not going to get up out of here without me dropping this. Okay, we got six minutes. Bam. All right. I'm ready. Um, so, God has been moving in all our lives, man. Mm -hmm. You know, again, thank you for having me. Thank you, the production team, the producers for having me. Um, me, Dwan, World Design, just are the you know some people that we line for the dispatch. We do have um, a project um, that we're that we're currently um, in pre-production of working on, um, and we are also working with um, a very 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 popular uh, R and B singer. Okay. Right? They are they are um, working with us on this project. Um, <clears throat> is it a new movie? Is it that I can't I can't, can't give tell you, me that? but I can't okay. give you who the artist is. Who is the artist? It's Lily Lyons from SWV. Mm -hmm. Lily! Lily. 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 Lily! Okay. Oh, and you know what? She write books too. Lily, Lily girl. Yes. I I love a good book. Okay. Lily. That's that's Lily that's Lily the Lily. premise of the show, honey. So right. Lily, when you come into town to do whatever you're doing. With them, you just stop by and see your girl. You know, drop, yeah. drop by, drop by. Okay, I love that. Yeah, so. so we don't know what exactly the project is, but yeah. I know it's gonna be fire. It's gonna be dope. It's gonna be dope. I'm so excited to hear that. Yeah. Yes, it Tam is. Tam 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 that is a Tam Telling Tales exclusive, everybody. So y'all make sure y'all on the lookout for that. Um, we have just a few more minutes left because he's gonna be going right into another interview, and so. Um, I want you to just before we go, make sure that everybody knows first the projects that they should be on the lookout for, what you want them to watch, what they should be, you know, searching for, and then of course let them know where they can find you on social media. Definitely. Well, you can find me on social media as uh, King Wesley Official on Instagram, King Wesley on Facebook. Um, I haven't really dialed off into the TikTok stuff yet, um, but it'd be soon enough. But most and definitely, you know, Federal Dispatch, go stream it now. Um, go tell a friend, tell a friend, and go tell a friend. Um, go watch uh, A Good Man, go watch Karma, go watch. Um, if you just type King Wesley in the Google search bar, um, mm -hmm. there everything pretty much pops up. Um, but be on the lookout. I do have an extremely, extremely 
uh, highly anticipated series by uh, Ms. McGraw and H Block. Yeah. Which is the first, first original spinoff from the, the hit series. Yeah. McGraw yeah. I knew Pre- Executive it. produced and directed by Murder Pain and Thomas L. Harris. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Oh. Shout out to my brother's man over there, Moonlight Films. Yes. That's what Shout out to Ceno, man. She ain't Ceno quarterback that. That's what's up. I can't wait. I absolutely cannot wait. McGraw's my favorite. One more. I do have an upcoming film that will be premiering in Cincinnati uh, March 30th. Mm. Uh, it's uh, produced by Casey Carson. I um, know you guys are familiar with mm-hmm. Casey. Yeah, it's right. a conjunction with Unique Productions. She's based out, she's from Cincinnati, but based out of Atlanta. That movie is entitled Boundaries. Okay. Um, it's starring uh, Unique herself, Unique Black Man, myself, Unique Third Man. Uh, Meach Icewood, and yeah. They put all of these mm-hmm. down in Cincinnati. I went to school in Ohio, so I'm familiar with Cincinnati. I was like, what's the date on that? Because I was going to try to make that one. Mm-hmm. I was, but I can't make yeah. it. Dang on it. Okay, mm-hmm. and then real quick before you go, um, you have your acting classes, right? Absolutely. The, so next, class, the next class begins March 11th, which is just Monday. about six, Monday, this, this upcoming Monday. Um, there's still seats available. I do keep my classes very intimate and small. That way that we can maximize our time while we in there. Um, the reviews from my previous classes, uh, they are they can be found at on Instagram at the Actors Compound. Um, I believe in, you know, people um, speaking for you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I can tell you anything, but when people start to speak for you and you're on your behalf when you're not in their presence, that says everything, a lot, you know yeah. what I mean? So shout out to my, my current phase one class that just graduated and my phase two class that's really knocking things out the ballpark right now. I'm so proud. I'm really, really proud of this, this last good. month. So I think all that, and you can follow them at the Phenomenal Five on Instagram. Okay. Yeah. And then if they want to inquire, they can email you as well, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. You can email me at one-on-one acting with king at gmail.com. Or you can just simply inbox me on Facebook. Again, my Facebook handle is King Wesley. Or you can DM me on uh, Instagram. It's King Wesley Official. Awesome. Okay. But you guys, we are out of time. Uh, we are so thankful that you guys um, came over to see about King, to see about Tim. Make sure that you are following me on all social media sites, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, at Tim telling tales before we go i want you to help me out with the sign you. off you. you know what already okay i don't even have to even shirt you oh okay then but that's it all right y'all i'm tam i'm telling tales go read a book i got it tam telling tales i got it tam telling tales i got it Tam telling tale. I got it. Talk twister. Say it real fast one time. Pull that out. Um.